Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this little circle intro thing, circle animation I guess. Uh, this is what we're going to be creating. Uh, it's pretty cool, you can see uh, got a few rings going around and then it reveals the logo. Um, so yeah guys, let's jump right into it. So the first thing you want to do obviously is be in After Effects and we're going to create a new composition. And by the way, I have a bit of a cold, so sorry if I sound different. Um, I'm going to do 1920 by 1080 and yeah, just copy these settings down. It should be the default though and create that new comp. Now, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and add in your logo. So here's mine and I'm just going to zoom out here quick and scale this down holding shift to a size I want. So somewhere around there. Actually, let me just get rid of that for now. Okay. And then let's go to layer new solid and you want to pick the color you want in the background. So I'm just going to go and select some sort of blue, maybe something like that. Okay. And put that behind the logo. So here you go. And I'm actually going to make the logo a tiny bit smaller. Holy shift. All right, now let's go to layer new and we're gonna go to shape. And we wanna get a ellipse. Let's go to the ellipse tool and let's zoom in here a little bit and we wanna go right in the middle. Click, shift, and either alt or command depending on PC or Mac. Uh, in my case, I'm on Mac, so it's command. We're gonna create a circle that's bigger than our logo like that. And we want to go ahead and click on fill, not the actual box, but the actual letters fill and select none. And then we want to go bump up the stroke. We'll go like 50, somewhere like 55. That seems to work. And let's go select a color for stroke. And I'm going to get the eyedropper and just select the pink that's on my logo. And let's actually make this a tiny bit bigger. There we go, that works. And make sure you have the shape layer selected and go up here to add. And we wanna add a trim paths. So that'll pop up over here. And you wanna go a few frames out and you wanna go to end and click this uh, stopwatch and put this down to zero. And then you wanna move forward. I'm gonna go to about right here and make a keyframe there and bring this to a hundred. Then I'm going to go a few more frames ahead. Actually, let's go to about there and get a start. Uh, click the start stopwatch to create a, create a keyframe. And oh, sorry guys, something is in my eye. Um, and we want to set that to 100. Then let's go forward. We'll go about here and set it to zero. I, or did I do that backwards? I might have done that backwards. I did that backwards. All right, let's go to that first one. Zero. Second one, 100. That's what we want. So we get something along the lines of this. And you can make that a little quicker. You could change the keyframes where they're at. Um, so I'm actually gonna bring this one in about 15. Select these two, bring them over to about there. And then bring this guy in. Something like that, that sped it up a little bit. Now let's go ahead and select all these keyframes. Right click, keyframe assist easy ease. You can also just hit F9 on the keyboard. And now this is what we have. So that looks pretty cool. Now let's go to that layer and let's duplicate it. Let's go control C, control V. And let's go somewhere where we can see the path. 
and let's go to the stroke and let's get another color so I'm gonna keep with the color scheme and get this blue and I'm actually gonna bump the size down we'll go about 40 and then we'll size this whole th excuse me we'll size this whole thing down somewhere around there that works let's duplicate this again and let's select another color we'll go silvery white and bring down the size again holding shift and then we just want to offset these a little bit so we'll move that second shape layer back a little and then the third one back even further so there should be a slight delay like this so that looks pretty cool now I'm gonna to go to the original circle layer so let's go about like there let's go to the original let's duplicate that guy and let's go to the color and we're actually just gonna make that color just a little bit darker and then we're gonna decrease the size so it's pretty thin maybe like seven and then we'll expand this outwards so it's towards the edge and actually let's bring up the size a little more and then we're gonna offset that even more actually we'll offset the original one by a tad bit something like that there we go and <clears throat> excuse me and we can do a similar thing with the white let's duplicate that guy and we'll select the color we'll make it a little darker and we'll make it a little thinner then we'll offset it even more and let's actually maybe decrease the size this time so it's a little inside let's see how that looks not bad now we want to spice up these uh, circles because they all look the same we want to add a little something to give them a little diversity I guess you could say so let's go ahead to the third one which is in my case this bluish gray one and we want to go to the effects and presets let's actually just go to effect effect and let's go to transition and let's get the Venetian blinds now uh, let's bring up the transition completion you can see we start getting lines in the sky so um, let's find a place where we can see it pretty well somewhere like there and let's change this angle go on a side angle like so and let's play with the width bump it up a little bit maybe a little too much there we'll do about 34 let's go on a more of an angle like that that's all right maybe the other way maybe sideways I don't know you guys can just play around with this till you get something you like and you can even feather it a little bit if you want uh, different looks but I'm gonna leave that at zero and maybe bring up the completion pull it down something like that so let's check out what this looks like so you get something like that the Venetians looking a little weird right now uh, hmm let's see we'll just stick with that <clears throat> whatever there we go and that looks that looks pretty good now uh, this is this can't be the only thing we add because everything else still looks fairly similar so let's go to the very bottom layer which is the second pink one that I created and we want to go inside this layer to go to the ellipse let's go to not to fill the stroke and we want to go to dashes and press the plus and now we want to increase the dash so we get something like this and I actually did this on the wrong layer is it this layer I want yeah this is the layer I want let's do that again and let's bump up the size of these guys
there we go. Uh, 54 seems to work. You can increase the offset if you want to try to line it up a little bit better. So I'm just going to leave that at zero for now. And you can see if we go ahead and play through this, that's kind of what our circle looks like. Looks pretty cool. Um, but let's go ahead to one of these layers, not the one that we did the Venetian blinds to, or the last one we did, just one of the normal circles. And we actually wanna go ahead and copy that one and paste it, bring it to the top. <clears throat> And we want to go to fill, we want to click it, and we want to make it a solid color. And then go to stroke and just set that to zero. And then let's go ahead and bring that shape layer back down to the very bottom. And let's decrease the size so it's somewhere like there. So it gets cut off by our innermost circle or ring, I guess you could say. And we're gonna do a similar thing we've been doing. You can see it's already doing it for us because we kept those keystrokes. It kind of fills out, but we want it to be a little bit delayed. So let's bring this back maybe to, to there. So we get something like this, and then it should close. And that's gonna what that's what's gonna reveal our logo. And all we wanna do is go to that layer and duplicate it offset it a little bit maybe even put forward and we want to select a color and let's do uh, let's do white and then let's duplicate that again maybe move it forward a little bit and we'll do a blue so let me just get the original blue like that bluish purple and let's see what this looks like boom so you can see in the beginning when it goes you, you don't see any other colors, you just see the blue go, which is all right. And then you'll see woo, all the other colors go. So this looks pretty sweet. You can see, actually, I should probably make these a little smaller. Like that, that works. And then you just wanna go ahead and find where that logo would be completely hidden. So you can see right about here, that logo is completely hidden. So let's go to the logo, let's go open up the transform tab underneath, let's go to opacity, uh, click the stopwatch, set it to zero, hit enter, move a frame ahead, and then set it to 100. And now you'll see we get something like this. That's the logo reveal guys, you can also do something where you add a drop shadow. So if you just type in drop shadow over here, you can go ahead and add a drop shadow to all these layers and that kind of creates a cool effect, which is what I did in the original. If we go back to that real fast, you can see these have a more of like a, like more depth to them. And that's by just adding a simple drop shadow and turning down the opacity a little bit. But yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you in some way. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. At 100 likes, I will put this file in the description for you guys to download. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Quezzy, and subscribe for more tutorial, guys. But I'll see you guys next time. Peace.